You have rightly said, this is not an attack on the Maori language, but quote, on the elite virtue signalers, we've got them here, who've hijacked the language for their own socialist means. As brilliantly put, and you've said, just as here this minority left-wing Marxist, indigenous activist proponents of the S-vote, you've summed it up about those who've hijacked the language. You say, this conceited, conniving, cultural cabal does not represent hard-working, ordinary Maori. They only seek to use Maori to further their own agenda. Amplify that, precisely. we've got it here. Well, that's precisely what they're gonna do. And I can see it emerging in your country. It's not for me to interfere with Australia, but I know that there's no possibility whatsoever of the uh, indigenous people of Australia having one voice for a start, any more than there's one voice of Maori in my country. That's the, number, the first thing. The second thing is what you'll see is an industry where they'll gorge at the top and nothing will be going for the people at the bottom. And you'll spend billions getting there in the same way as we're wasting billions in our country. Meanwhile, what Maori want is decent housing, affordable and, uh, and safe. They want access to health systems if they should fall ill. They want an education transfer or escalators for their children to go as far as they can possibly go. And they want first world wages. Those are the four things Maori want. And that's what everybody wants, I think, worldwide. But no, these four things will never be treated because the money will go to the elitist demands of, re, of changing and reshaping history and the so-called transformation. The transformation that they're looking for is, of course, the Maori in control in a system where the Maori have the final say because, because of the UN Declaration of 2007, which I would not sign up to when I was a foreign minister, has been adopted in my country and they're using that as the base to bring in these nefarious laws. So this is the Ardern legacy? It is the Ardern, the Ardern legacy. You know what they did? They had a committee which we started to try and answer the UN, UN declaration, which John Key and the National Party and the Act and the Maori Party signed up to. And we, and at the time, the last foreign minister in 2007, with Helen Clark, the then Labor Prime Minister, we said, this is against New Zealand's constitution, it's against our democracy, we're not going to approve it. But the National Party signed up that. Then they had to do some work to try and answer the UN. And that report, they never showed me, even though I was the Deputy Prime Minister. That's how secret and covert it was. And when I found that out, and it came out in December, just after the 2020 election, I said I'll never deal with those people again because they simply lied. Mm. You asked a question in that speech, why are we putting up with this bulldust, you said. Can you answer your own question? Well, that's uh, the, the reason why we're putting up with it is because people don't realise how delicate a flower democracy is. If you look down the history of humanity, it is a very brief flicker in the history of humanity to have a democracy, and we've got to defend it, and not enough people understand and know that, and how it can be so quickly corroded. And also, it bespeaks a demand for the media of this country, and they're like, they're in Australia, to understand that as well, because we're all at risk at this point in time of having our system changed to the extent that we can't change it back. And mm. by the time that happens, here comes Venezuela. Mm. 